should I rent it or should I sell it, is one of the most common conversations I'm having right now with homeowners who are thinking about moving, but they're not really sure what to do with their current property or if they have a bunch of investment properties, is it time to cash out or do we keep a tenant in there? So in this video, I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of renting out a property and being an investor as opposed to selling that property and cashing out. If you don't know who I am, my name is Christian Stubbs. I'm a team leader, co-founder here at the SB Luxury Group. And in this video, I really just want to give you your options so you can figure out what to do with your home. All right, so let's go right into it. Let's talk about the pros of renting out a property. And if these don't sound enticing at all, then it's probably not for you. Okay, so let's roll into the pros of renting out your property and either becoming an investor or keeping more investment properties. So first and foremost is your principal pay down. So this is pretty straightforward, but when you own a property, let's assume you have a mortgage on it because most people do, especially investors, you're gonna have a tenant in there paying, if not all of the mortgage payment, at least a really good chunk of it, which means you have somebody else paying off the mortgage that you took out on the property. So they're paying all of the interest, but they're also paying principal on your property. So if you have a loan amount of $500,000 and they're making their mortgage payment every single month, you're probably paying that mortgage down by 500 to $1,000 every month and the tenant is doing that for you. Principal pay down is like putting money in the savings account in the equity of your home. So principal pay down is number one. Number two, this one right now, if you're looking and making this decision, in the short term is appreciation is not guaranteed. Now, if you look at a time horizon that's long enough, and if you're thinking about owning a property for 10, 20, 30 years, it's always been profitable and appreciation to own property for the long term. Rental real estate is not a short term. It's not a get rich quick scheme. This is something that will, will build you wealth over the long period of time unless something crazy happens where home values in California or the United States are no longer popular. I can't imagine that world, but if you look at home values in California, specifically Southern California, we see on average 5% appreciation year over year over year. And yes, that includes the years like 2008 and 2022 where property values came down dramatically. 5% appreciation is normal, but if you're thinking about doing this right now, it is possible for pricings to come down. Now, it's really important to understand with pricing or home values, I should say, that that price is not locked in until you actually sell the property. So if your property value comes down by 20%, your fixed costs don't change. So your rent is still gonna be coming in the same as long as you have a lease and a tenant in there. And your mortgage, as long as you're on a fixed rate mortgage, that's not changing either. Your property, your property taxes change a little bit each year, but nothing to write home about. So it's important to realize that whatever prices are doing, it's only relevant if you sell. Now let's move on to the next, which is tax benefits. One of the biggest things that most people don't realize when you get into real estate investing is there's so many tax benefits of owning rental real estate or just owning real estate in general. But specific to investment properties, you now can depreciate that property. Now I'll start by saying I am not an accountant and you should probably talk to one if you're talking about taxes at all, but I'll give you a really high level overview from a realtor's perspective, is you can depreciate that property. So we just talked about appreciation in price. Well, depreciation means that the home itself is gonna have problems with it over time. So for example, your roof is only gonna last so long, your plumbing's only gonna last so long, your HVAC system's only gonna last so long, and so on and so forth. So you're able to actually depreciate the property over a long period of time, which is gonna save you money in taxes. That's the short story of it. Talk to your accountant if you want the long story. But tax benefits in owning real estate Realize that your investment property is really a business in itself. So you're going to have rental income, you're going to have expenses, and you really are going to be paying taxes on your profits. Now let's talk about the last point that I'll make before we go over to selling your property, which is the deferred tax benefit on capital gains. Now this is really known as the 1031 exchange, but what this means is if you bought a property, let's say 
you bought your home 10 years ago for $500,000 and now it's worth a million. Normally when you sell that property, you would have capital gains tax where you could be paying a huge chunk of that appreciation in taxes because you had a profit. Well, with an investment property, you have the ability to do what's called a 1031 exchange where you're actually deferring all of the tax to the next property if you sell it and then don't 1031 exchange again. So you're not skipping taxes, you're deferring it. But if this is done properly over a very long period of time, you can own properties and trade up and up and up and up and never actually pay those taxes on those properties. So this is a situation where you could get a really good deal on a property, add value to it, put a tenant in there, and then you're gonna have them pay on that for a couple of years. And then if you sell that property and reinvest all of that money into the next property, you won't have to pay taxes. So this is an incredible way to continue to leg up in property types to be able to grow your portfolio over time. So if this sounds interesting and you're not really sure what your property would rent for or what it would sell for right now in this market, shoot us a message, either reply to this if you're watching on email, if you're watching this on YouTube, I would definitely recommend going over and sending us a DM. So if you're curious about what you can get for your property for rent and for sale, we would be more than happy to put together what we call a rent versus sell analysis, where we will put together what you should be able to rent your property out for if you need to do any upgrades, also your options for selling that property, what it would look like and what you could net out of that sale. I'd be more than happy to put that together. Go over to our channel and hit the button that says talk to a local expert and I'd be more than happy to put that together for you. All right, so let's move into the sell of the home. So there's really two different things that are most common when you're talking about selling a property, especially right now. First and foremost is I want to sell the property because I want to cash out and maybe do something else with the money. So maybe you're thinking about investing it in the stock market or maybe you have a business that you're investing in. But the important thing to realize here is when you're investing this money into something else, you really do want to take a look at what would that money be able to do for me as a rental property versus what would I be able to do with it in whatever it else you're, is you're going to invest that money in. That's one of the major things that I think a lot of people don't realize is they can go in, you look at the numbers of what you could get for it as a rental property. And if not, always go in and compare that. So the other option, which is way more common is I just want to sell. I want to cash out. I want to have cash in the bank. Cash is king is one of the most common sayings for a reason. You're in the situation where you're selling, waiting for prices to come down so you can buy something later. My biggest piece of advice, and I'm not saying that's not going to happen or that's wrong. I don't think it's going to, but regardless, if you're thinking about prices coming down, so you're going to sell high and you're going to buy low, that's fine. My advice is to anybody in this situation, if I'm talking to you, have a plan B. In case prices don't come down, what would you do? What would happen? What would that situation look like? That's a conversation I'm having with all of my clients who are thinking about selling, thinking that this might be the bottom, the top of the market and that prices might come down. So for those clients in that situation, I always just suggest have a plan B and realize the numbers. If you go sell that property and you rent, they're going to be moving twice. There's expenses there and you're going to be paying rent, whether it be one year or two years. If you're paying, let's say $5,000 a month in rent, that's $60,000 a year plus moving costs. Just in one year, you're going to have to hope that prices come down at least $70,000 from when you sold. It really depends on what prices do and what you want. But if that's your plan, always just make sure you have a plan B. All right, so I hope this was helpful on really just taking the difference between renting versus selling. And if you want that market analysis on the rent versus sell, go over to the YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe, and then go ahead and send us a DM or talk to one of our local experts, and we'll put that rent versus sell analysis together for you. Again, my name is Christian Subs, and we'll see you in the next video.